so uh, how are things going in quarantine, and uh, how's training going? Well, I mean, obviously, you can't really train. You just do your best around the, around the place. I don't have much to go with, but uh, oh well. Yeah, you got any, like, weights or anything like that? Anything uh, to do? Yeah, to, uh... I've, uh, I, I've said this before. I, I, I got a pair of 40-pound dumbbells, a medicine ball, and a skipping rope, and I'm... Uh, Doing doing the best with what I got, you know. Are you uh, are you back home in Bonneville or are you in uh, the city? No, I I live in Edmonton, so I'm here. Okay, what's uh what was it like growing up in Bonneville? Is that is it a farm town? Uh sort of. It, it, there's farms, lots of farms around it, but it's an oil field town. Uh, I don't know. It's a smaller town, I guess. Town of about five to seven thousand. I'm not really sure where it's at right now, but I uh, yeah, I mean I. I liked growing up there, but that's all I knew. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what's the uh, what's the word on your next fight? Obviously, you were expected to fight Jeff Hughes. Uh, lots of cancellations and postponements, and fight boats and fight islands and fighting on the moon. Uh, so, what, it, what what's the status of that fight? Is that uh, is that still up in the air? Or uh... I I think that the matchup will remain the same as far as I know. But we're all waiting to see if Fight Island, which Dana White swears up and down, is going to happen starting in mid to late May. You know, there's the card on May 9th that, again, we're all waiting to uh, we're all waiting to see and make sure it happens. But that one is in the States, just not confirmed where everybody suspects Florida. Right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, if Fight Island or <clears throat> or if they can get me to. The states. Either way, I don't care. I'm I'm down, and I'll be uh, you know as ready to go as I can be. So you're good to go, uh, even if you got a call for May 9th. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> All right. Um, so you've also got some high quality guys there. Uh, you know, you've got guys like Teddy Ash and and the Buellers. Um, obviously, you don't get to get uh, training camps in with them. How how long do you think it'll be before those guys get picked up by an organization like the UFC? Teddy Ash in particular. Uh, okay, well, Teddy had uh, had that fight on Contender Series. He lost that. I don't know. Teddy should should just be one win away, I think. I mean, on, especially on short notice. Teddy always shows up. He's always exciting, and he's uh, he's a great fighter. Uh, KB, KB, I think, can get signed right away. You just got to see he's rehabbing an injury. So uh, everything's kind of on hold for KB, but um, I know KB was at least in talks, uh, in contact with them a little bit. Uh, yeah, those are the two guys you want to know. I mean, Christian Larson, he's obviously, and Graham Park, are obviously close to um, getting getting uh, opportunities in bigger uh, leagues or internationally, rather, maybe not necessarily UFC, but uh, maybe Bellator or maybe, um, you know, ACA or M1 or something like that. You've had a you've had a much longer road than a lot of people to get in the UFC, especially in the heavyweight division. I find the the heavyweight division isn't as stacked as it once was, and a lot of guys, uh, in particular your last opponent, and even guys like Greg Hardy have, you know, within two or three fights they're n- knocking on the door for the UFC. You've had twenty something fights before you got the call. What was it like to get the call to finally compete for the biggest organization in the world? And do you think that's the way to go? More fights or uh, do you think uh, if, if you get the call, take it? There's no one way to go for everybody. It depends on the individual. You know, I'm happy that my career went uh, the way it did and is going the way it is. Uh, I, I'm i glad I have the experience fighting really good guys. You know, I've done, I've done five rounds. I've, I've had fast fights. I've done, I've fought a lot of guys and I got a lot of cage time. And I think that that's to my advantage. But if somebody you know, is running through everybody wherever they're at. And like you mentioned, Cyril Gaon, I mean, if he gets signed at 4-0 and and he proves that he's not only good enough to be there, but pretty elite, then good for him. Like, there's no there's no road set in stone. It depends on the person. I mean, if you can hang, you can hang. It doesn't really matter. You're you're now one and one in the, uh, in the UFC. What was it like, uh, obviously, your first opponent – had to pull out and you uh you got a short notice opponent i guess 
um, for your for your debut win. What was it like to to get that win and uh, compare it? I guess I mean there's been a, obviously uh, nerves and UFC jitters uh, comes to mind when people make their debut. Did you did you feel any of that? Okay, so um, I my fight got canceled because. Limos pulled out the day before weigh-in. So my fight against Daniel Spitz wasn't short notice for either okay. of us. We had a training camp and we fought in Boston uh, in October instead of Edmonton in July. Uh, I had no UFC jitters. It was the same old thing. Like, I mean, I had, how many fights do I have? 24? 24. So, I mean, I, I'd already had um, 22 fights. I... I know that the UFC jitters, everybody claims it's a thing, and many fighters say it's a thing, but it didn't affect me at all. You mentioned your, your first fight was going to be in Edmonton, and there are talks, or there, there was supposed to be a fight in Saskatoon. If, if, that, if that opens up, is that something you're looking forward to? And Would you be more excited to fight close to home, or, or are you uh, someone who, who likes fighting abroad? I've fought abroad a lot, and I wouldn't be opposed to having one uh, close to home. I'm good with either. I'm good with fighting the soonest. If you can get me on the soonest card and uh, let me fight and let me get paid, that's ideal. I don't believe Saskatoon's going to happen. I can't see how it would. Canada's very, very on lockdown, and there's no way they can get a bunch of international fighters here. I could be wrong. If that card happens and I'm not already on uh, schedule to be on a uh, post flight card on flight island or whatever then yes that would be great but my priority is is fighting soonest not um particular location yeah yeah i'm in nova scotia and the lockdown here is pretty uh pretty crazy uh you can't really get out much uh is yeah. the same sort of thing there like you get fined if you're out on the street no uh no you you can get fined if you're whatever uh running and in a non-essential business or something running a non-essential business or in groups. I think, I think you can get in trouble of like groups above 10 people, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. I know you can get in uh, fined if you're in a park that closed all parks and stuff like that, but no, they don't really limit like how many times a day you could, for instance, go to the grocery store or something like that. Yeah. You still, uh, you, you do security, right? So I'm assuming you're not doing that at the moment. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's obviously all the clubs and everything are shut down, which is fine. Yeah. Um. So then there's uh there's talk. Well, I mean, Rosenstrike and Nganu are uh are clashing. I guess they're uh, at UFC 249 supposedly. Um. What What are your thoughts on that fight? Obviously, it's in your division. Uh, two very very big guys. Obviously. Um, Rosenstreich came out and said it should be for an interim title, and Ganu agrees. Is that something you agree with, or is it something that you don't really care about? I 100% don't care. They're going to fight either way. I don't give a shit if it's for an interim title. It's, it's going to be a really wicked fight. I'm looking forward to watching the fight because there's no way that's not fireworks. But, you know, either guy is, is so far above me in the rankings that it's, to me, it's inconsequential. I don't care for an interim title or not. Um, do you, uh, what are your thoughts on it? Do your, your predictions on it? Well, I'll, I'll bet on Nganu. Yeah, that's, that's how I have it going. Um, but I mean, they both hit really hard. So, so who, so who knows how it's going to go? What about, uh, what about Tony and Gaethje if that fight were to happen? I, I think that prevailing theory is that Tony's, Tony's the man, and we need to see him fight Khabib. But Gagey comes out of the gate really hot and hits so hard. And Tony isn't afraid to take some shots. And, and Gagey hits so hard. And Tony loses the first round a decent amount and then just shreds guys up and, and wins later in the fight. Uh, you know what? I think, especially if Gagey was an underdog, I think I'd bet on Gagey. Yeah, that's how I have it, too. I just think, like, if... If Tony can weather the storm, Tony. Yeah, sure. I mean, if we get into round yeah. three, four, things can change. In a five-round fight, I don't know who's going to beat that maniac, and you know, in round four and five, right? But early on, man, I, I don't know. It's possible too that Gagey could take one, two, and three, and then you're looking at at Ferguson just late. It's it's a really interesting fight. Uh, I'm I'm excited to watch that if it happens. 
Yeah, I think I'm more excited for that one than I would have been Tony Khabib. Obviously, the history makes me more excited for Khabib and Tony, but I think fight-wise, uh, I, I would not sit down for the, for the Tony Gaethje fight. I'd be on my feet the entire time. Yeah. Uh, I, I, again, it doesn't matter to me which fight happens. Both are good fights, and I have no stake in the game there. So it, it doesn't make a difference to me if it's Tony versus Khabib or Tony versus Gaethje. As far as I'm concerned, both of those fights are great, and hopefully both happen at some point. Um, you started you started your career, I guess, in karate, right? You started doing karate. What was the uh, what was the transition like to MMA? Uh, it was a big learning curve. I I did karate from when I was eleven to when I was like nineteen, eighteen, nineteen. So, uh, I thought that I would just be good to go because I was a dumb kid and that was it. But uh, I had a lot of learning to do and, um, you know, I had to get put in my place a few times, but, you know, I'm thankful for all of those lessons and experiences, but it's definitely, it's definitely not a straight transition. You gotta, you gotta adapt even the things you think, you know, what was the, what was the hardest trend? Like what was the hardest martial art to, to get into? Was it jujitsu wrestling? I'd say wrestling probably for me. Uh, yeah, learning wrestling is when when you've started a striking jujitsu for me at least came easier than wrestling. I like to think nowadays I'm pretty well rounded, but uh, yeah, I, I think I think learning learning how to effectively wrestle at all was the hardest. Yeah, I do I do a little bit of jujitsu, and when I first I was like I'll try some Muay Thai. Took my first shot to the body, and I was like, "That's that's not for me." Um, so it's it's funny how like if you feel comfortable in one martial art, you'd think that a quick transition to another one would come naturally, but it was uh it's definitely not it's not that way. Sorry, just gotta plug my phone in. Uh, yeah, it's jujitsu. You can you can do and slow it slow it down, and you can you can you can roll slow and you can practice you can go light but in wrestling wrestling is a lot of drive a lot of grind and if you're very specific you know muscles aren't uh acclimated to uh wrestling moves and and the way they fatigue in a wrestling match it's just really really hard to uh work your body up to the point where it becomes efficient at that whereas i feel like it's easier to become efficient at jujitsu as somebody who hasn't grappled at all. But um, obviously, neither one is easy. Yeah. What uh, is there? Is there a fight or a fighter that got you into into MMA? Yeah, uh, Lyoto Machida. I when he um, it was when he knocked out Tiago Silva, and they were both undefeated. And you know, he he fights very karate ish and. Uh, I thought, like, I was a big fan of his when I was a teenager, and I was like, oh, I can, you know, I, I think I could do that, not, like, achieve what he achieved or anything like that. But I'm like, I, I can, I think I could maybe fight a bit like that. So that was, that was it, yeah. Yeah, for me, it was, for me, it was Rampage, but different oh, yeah. reasons, just anger. I was like, I, I can relate to that guy. Uh, <laughs> so that's, he's the guy that that got me into it. Um yeah, so your last fight was against Cyril, Cyril Gunn. I don't know how to pronounce his name properly. Uh, he, was... had a, he had a lot of hype, uh, a lot of power, great submissions. You're the only person that took him to, uh, to decision. Um, your thoughts on, on his fighting style, and, and, and do you think he's got a lot of hype behind him, or do you think he's as legit as they come? Well, he's got a lot of hype, he's got a lot of hype behind him, but it's not unmerited. He's earned it, in my opinion. At least now he's earned it, like, to me. Maybe to other people, it's still a lot of unjustified hype, but he beat me fair and square, so I gotta, I gotta believe it. Um, truthfully, I, I don't see a ton of bad matchups for him outside of I want to see him versus Curtis Blades. That's a hard matchup, I, in my, I think. But um, who knows? He's he's good. He's good, man. His fighting style is technical. But he'll mix it up, and he's strong, and he hits hard. He's quick. He switches stances. He's tricky. There's uh, he's a dynamic guy. 
As uh, as for you, um, obviously you've got a big test ahead of you, so you probably don't want to see too far into the future. Um, is there a fighter in the heavyweight division that you've had your eyes on that you want to fight, or are you just I don't care? I really don't. I really don't care. Like I want to fight as often as I can, which unfortunately right now this is not my ideal <laughs> situation. Uh, I'll fight Jeff Hughes, or if it's not Jeff Hughes, I'll fight someone else. I just want to fight frequently. I don't have my eye on a particular anyone. It's, I, I seriously don't care. I don't have any kind of grudges, you know what I mean, against any. I get Maurice Green turned me down for some reason. I could have fought in August. So, I mean, I guess I could guess I could fight him, but I, seriously, I don't care. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I mean, my favorite fighter personally is uh, Donald Cerrone for that same mentality. Uh, and I think a lot of people like guys like that who just don't care. Bring it on. Like you said, doesn't matter where, doesn't matter who, just as long as it's happening often. So uh, thank you for taking the time, man. I appreciate it. And uh, hope to see you out there soon, maybe on a fight boat, maybe on the moon, maybe in Florida. Who knows? But uh, hope to see you soon, man. Yeah, thanks. All right, man. Thanks for taking the time. Yeah, no worries. Take it easy, man. Yeah, you too.